In this video we will discuss the life and work of Edvard Munch, the Norwegian painter who created one of the most iconic images of modern art, the screen. But who was Edvard Munch, and what inspired his expressionist style? Let's find out. Edvard Munch was born in 1863 in a small village in Norway, to a middle-class family that was plagued with ill health. His mother died when he was five, his eldest sister when he was 14, both of tuberculosis, Munch eventually captured the latter event in his first masterpiece, The Sick Child. Munch's father and brother also died when he was still young, and another sister developed mental illness. Illness, insanity, and death, as he said, were the black angels that kept watch over my cradle and accompanied me all my life. Edvard's own ill temperament kept him home throughout Norway's bitterly harsh winters, and often kept him out of school. But that doesn't mean he did nothing. He would devote himself to painting in between tutoring sessions with his classmates, Aunt Karen, and his father. Christian Munch committed himself to teaching his children on history and literature after his wife died, delighting them with lively readings from Edgar Allan Poe's stories of fear. However, when the kids misbehaved, Christian would strike out verbally. He believed that their departed mother was looking down from heaven, embarrassed by them. The Poe tales as well as his father's dark tendencies would shape Edvard's psyche and art. He once wrote, quote, my father was temperamentally nervous and obsessively religious, to the point of psychoneurosis. From him I inherited the seeds of madness. The angels of fear, sorrow, and death stood by my side since the day I was born." Unquote. Munch showed a flair for drawing at an early age but received little formal training. He was influenced by the French Impressionists, the Post-Impressionists, and the Symbolists, who sought to express their inner visions rather than the external reality. He also befriended a circle of writers and artists in Oslo, then called Christiania, who believed in free love and opposed bourgeois narrow-mindedness. One of them was the Swedish playwright August Strindberg, whom Munch painted in a famous portrait. Munch dabbled with Impressionism, Naturalism, and even a series of nudes while searching for his artistic style. However, a painting titled Standing Nude is the only one in this latter series that spared his father's anger. Though Christian would occasionally send his son money, many art historians believe he may have destroyed Edvard's early naked paintings. The sketches are now the only indication that more existed. Munch traveled extensively in Europe, exhibiting his works and gaining recognition. He settled in Berlin for a while, where he created a series of paintings that he called the Frieze of Life, depicting themes such as love, anxiety, jealousy, and betrayal. The screen was part of this series, and it was inspired by a personal experience that Munch described in his diary, quote, I was walking along the road with two friends, the sun was setting, suddenly the sky turned blood red, I paused, feeling exhausted, and leaned on the fence, there was blood and tongues of fire above the blue-black fjord and the city, my friends walked on, and I stood there trembling with anxiety, and I sensed an infinite scream passing through nature." Unquote. The screen became Munch's most famous work, and he made four versions of it, two paintings, two pastels, and several prints. One of the pastels sold for nearly $120 million at an auction in 2012, making it one of the most expensive artworks ever sold. Munch's love life was also turbulent and tragic. He had several affairs with married women, but he never married himself. He was afraid of losing his artistic freedom and energy to a domestic life. He once wrote, quote, I have never had any real contact with women, they have been like ghosts to me, unquote. Edvard Munch was nervous about women, if not terrified of them. He believed that females deprived men of artistic energy, sucked life out of them, just like vampires, and there was nothing more disastrous for a man than a tender love affair. You have to give him credit though, he did not even try to hide his take on the issue from Tula Larsen, and never pretended to be a caring, gentle lover, even at the height of their love affair. He gave neither assurances, nor unsupported hopes. 
he used to give it to her in a straightforward way, quote, you will continuously seek an earthly happiness with me, who as I always explained to you does not belong to this earth, unquote. The brooch is a 1903 lithograph of Munch's sweetheart, English musician Eva Madachi, 1883-1953. The concept is similar to Munch's most famous painting, Madonna. Madachi also occurs in Munch's other works from the same year, The Violin Concert and Salome. Munch has been recorded as remarking that Madachi had eyes of a thousand years, and once wrote to her in a letter, here is the stone that has fallen from my heart. Birgit Presto, one of Munch's favorite models, inverted the typical roles of artist and model by characterizing Munch in this way, I thought he was delightful to look at, beautiful as a young Apollo, wise as an aging Zeus. She modeled for numerous of Munch's works and eventually became famous for allowing herself to be interviewed about her experiences as a model, a career that was generally seen as nearly scandalous at the time. One of his most passionate relationships was with Tula Larson, a wealthy heiress who pursued him relentlessly. She wanted to marry him, but he resisted. Their relationship ended in a dramatic incident in 1902, when Munch accidentally shot himself in the hand during an argument with her. He later depicted this event in a painting called The Shooting Accident. Munch's mental health deteriorated after this episode. He suffered from hallucinations, paranoia, and alcoholism. In 1908, he checked himself into a clinic in Copenhagen, where he underwent electrotherapy and recovered some stability. He returned to Norway and bought a farm near Oslo, where he lived for the rest of his life. He continued to paint prolifically, but his style became more colorful and less anguished. He also experimented with photography and film. Munch died in 1944 at the age of 80. He left behind a huge collection of paintings, drawings, prints, sculptures, photographs, films, and writings. He donated most of his works to the city of Oslo, which built a museum dedicated to him, the Munch Museum. His legacy is immense, he is widely regarded as one of the pioneers of expressionism and a major influence on many modern artists. And so now we end our exploration about the life and work of Edvard Munch. Do you have a favorite painting by him? Let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching. If you're enjoying the content so far, I would really appreciate it if you could take a moment to subscribe to our channel. By subscribing, you'll be the first to know when we upload new videos, and you'll never miss out. Also, don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. It really helps out and lets us know that you're enjoying the content. And if you think this video would be helpful or entertaining for someone else, please share it with them. Finally, make sure to hit the notification bell so you never miss a new video. Hitting the bell ensures that you'll always be notified when we upload new content. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.